equipment to this beautiful facility. And uh, we were on the verge. This rain hurts us a little bit, but uh, we're on the verge. We're almost making a record attendance here this weekend. So thank you for supporting us in all the adventures that you've done. But this morning, we've got some really fun and exciting things to talk about. And uh, joining me is the governor of New York State, and we couldn't be prouder for having Andrew Cuomo here. So thank you for coming, Governor. Thank you, thank you very much. What we're going to talk about today is some things that we we're really excited about. What, the tourism, obviously, is always important, and the governor, thank goodness, has really, really put this at the top of his agenda. And obviously, having our tourist impact, and a lot of you travel from race to race and all across the country for the 38 cup races that happen at facilities across and. 20 plus of those at International Speedway Corporation. This is the fun thing that we get to do. The other thing that we really, really want to emphasize today, and the governor will address, but something that we want to announce from International Speedway Corporation is our public service announcements that we're going to be doing on texting and driving, distracted driving. It's the number one cause of accidents. And the governor will talk about some programs that he's put together and some legislation that's been passed in New York State that is very critical I also want to highlight, which, and I hope all you know about this from our sport, that Sprint is a leader and created apps that shut off your phone, automatically text when you're driving, and it picks up the motion. So you don't have to do a thing, and it actually sends a message right back when you're texting or, or driving that you can't answer. So those are the things that are critical in this world, and there's a lot of partners out there, but Sprint's definitely the leader in that. So across the International Speedway Corporation, we're going to put together a PSA, start showing it on our sprint screens, and at all International Speedway Corporation's uh, facilities for the remainder of the year, we're going to have this PSA broadcast throughout the country. So we're really proud with that, and with the chase coming up here in a few more weeks um, about the distracted driving and texting and driving message, that we can put something together that really alerts hundreds of thousands of fans at our facility. So without further ado, I'd like to um, introduce the governor again and... Um, give him an opportunity to discuss his programs. Governor? Thank you. Thank you very much. First, as uh, governor of New York, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome NASCAR to New York. Uh, Michael Printup for his great leadership of this beautiful facility. As a uh, car guy, it's a special treat for me to be here today. They actually let me take uh, my old Corvette out on the track and uh, I think I could have passed Regan Smith in the pace car if I in the pace car if I wanted to, but I gave him a break because he's a former New Yorker. Um, this is uh, great fun, and uh, I have my daughter Mariah here with me today. And uh, just as a, as a fan of the sport, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as Michael said, it's also a big business, not just in terms of the sport, but also for the states that host the sport. Uh, we'll have about 100,000 fans coming into this facility, about 75% from out of state. Uh, Watkins Glen means about $150 million in economic activity to the region. So it is a big business for us uh, and a, a special treat to have it here in New York. We've been working very hard in New York on tourism in general. This is a big sporting week for us. We had the PGA up in uh, Rochester, just about 100 miles or so from here. Bassmasters Tournament was in the North Country this week. Uh, so it's a big sporting week, big tourism week, uh, and we're, we're pleased and proud to host it in New York, uh, and we hope we do more. Uh, I also want to applaud NASCAR for what they're taking on in this distracted driving campaign. We've been very active on this in the state of New York, and I think this is the great, uh, next great safety challenge. Distracted driving which is using your cell phone, which is texting, which is using that electronic device while you're in the car, is a major problem in this state and this nation. It has, uh, it has surpassed alcohol uh, and drinking and driving as a problem. Now in this state, one out of five accidents is because of distracted driving. Five times more fatalities and injury from distracted driving than alcohol, believe it or not. Um, that's, that's the bad news. The good news is we know that we can change behavior because we've done it before. Uh, it's commonplace now for people to wear a seatbelt in a car. You know, that's, that's relatively new. And there was a time when uh, nobody wore a seatbelt. And when we first broached the concept of having a law that said you had to wear a seatbelt, there was nearly a revolt. Uh, the drinking and driving has been a tremendous social change. There was a time, I'm old enough to remember, people went to restaurant, 
went to a restaurant, they had a couple of glasses of wine, and they got in the car, they went out on a Saturday night, and they had a couple of drinks, and they drove the car. Uh, we changed societal behavior. And we have to do the same thing when it comes to distracted driving using a, uh, an electronic device when you're driving the car. Uh, and yes, uh, it's, it's something we use all the time, all day long, but not in the car. This is especially a problem with young drivers. 43% of teens admit to texting while driving or talking on the phone. 43% admit to it. Uh, my guess is the number is actually uh, much higher. And the numbers on these distracted driving accidents are going straight up uh, at an increasing rate. Because the more young people who are entering the population that's driving, the worse the problem is getting. Uh, because young people are so oriented towards those electronic devices. And young people and distracted driving is a bad combination. It's a toxic combination because the inexperience of the young driver is a real problem. So um, we're trying to change it. We've changed the laws in the state of New York that have increased the penalties for distracted driving. It's now five points on your license in New York, which is a lot of points, 11 points, and you can lose your license. Um, we've made it a primary offense. You can get a ticket in the state of New York just for distracted driving. It's not a secondary offense. But it's going to take more than the laws and more than enforcement. Uh, and that's why NASCAR getting involved in a campaign that basically says don't do it. You'll have the best drivers in the country saying that it's dangerous to text and drive. It's dangerous to uh, be distracted while you're driving. And if it is dangerous for the best drivers, people who drive 180 miles an hour, uh, then certainly it's dangerous for all drivers. And I think it's going to be a very powerful message. Uh, and there is no more authoritative source than NASCAR and race car drivers on this. If they say it's dangerous, it's dangerous uh, because they know the limits. So I think it's going to be very powerful, especially uh, with the, the viewership uh, and the fan base of NASCAR. I'm pleased as governor that they're going to do a campaign here in the state of New York, and uh, I think it's going to be p very powerful. And if we put the new laws together with enforcement, together with a public relations campaign that reaches out to people and says don't do it, especially young people, it's not cool, it's not safe, so don't do it, I think we'll actually save lives. And that's what this is all about at the end of the day. But again, thank you for, uh, to Michael Printup, uh, every boy's dream is to be able to take his car and drive around uh, Watkins Glen, and uh, it took me a few years, but I actually got there. So thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. Um, I can't thank um, Mike Helton and Mike's in the room and, and for supporting um, Watkins Glen International and the tourism, and uh, we really bless that. And to be here in wine country is something special, and I know Mr. Helton uh, always looks forward to coming back to wine country, so thank you. And Governor, I can't thank you enough as well. Thank you for coming down and doing this, and thanks for driving the track, because I know we've got some great photos for you. Great. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You know, I have... Uh, I have an old Corvette, 1975 Corvette, that I, that I took around the track. I had been around the track before uh, as a passenger. The, uh, what was striking to me is, you know, it's, it's a hard track. It was uh, striking how hard you are on the brakes, you know, how tough it is on the car. Uh, you're going from top speed and then, you know, in a few hundred feet, you know, you have to bring it to uh, way, way down. Um, I could smell the brake pads even, even in my car just going around it. So that was surprising to me. Uh, the turns, the difficulty in the turns, you know, when you, on, the, on the shoulder, the, the, uh, the bumps on the turn. So uh, it, was, it was striking the, uh, how challenging, of course, it actually is to drive. You know, it's e it looks easy when you're sitting there and you're watching them on TV, right, and they're all doing it. Uh, but uh, that was striking. And it was, it was a real thrill. Um, and my daughter was in uh, the pace car with Reagan Smith, so that was, uh, that was cool. Um, but it was fun. It was real fun. On a completely different topic, just wondering what you think about the whole A-Rod thing, and if you think you'll get cheers or cheers tonight. Well, you know, New Yorkers are tough. They're a tough group. They're a tough audience. 
Uh, and this is a legitimate issue, and it's, a, it's an issue that the entire sport is facing. Um, and um, I think in some ways it's going to be therapeutic for the sport because we have to work through this. Um, but, you know, New York fans are tough. They really are. Governor, since we're going off topic, can you talk at all about the controversy <laughs> surrounding the, the Pajovi Um, you know, nothing, I don't know anything more than I've read in the newspapers. Um, I don't think that the, the dates lined up, and that often happens. You know, everyone tries to do everything, but uh, an entertainer like John Bon Jovi is very busy. And uh, sometimes the, uh, the dates of when you want them and when they're available don't line up, but that happens.